Good morning traders and welcome to Phoenix Blues Morning Update. Today is Thursday the 8th of December. Hope you're all very well this morning. My name is Nishal Patel and I'm going to be giving you a brief synopsis of what's happening on the market for today. Um, first things first as always, let's start on the equities or the stock markets as to speak. Um, as we can see here, we do have a rise following on from the, um, the American close. Um, we see Dow Jones, S&P, both of them are up. Um, in fact, uh, we also had um, we also had a follow on um, straight through to the A uh, to the Asian Open, um, as we see in the Nikkei and the uh, the S and P ASX. Um, that really has come about from uh, quite a bullish mood, I would say, um, off the back of um, what seemed to be. Uh, a negative set of results at the start of the week, um, but it seems as if the bonds, uh, the bond market is trickling through, and it's uh, obviously having a knock-on effect um, to sentiment. So the mood is very bullish right now. Um, it, it, it looks as if all of uh, all of the stock markets are going to have a good strong run to the end of the year uh, right now. As it looks, um, it looks also that a lot of um, a lot of the, I would say asset burden. Uh, economies um, are lifting as well. So a ASX being one of them, having having uh, a brief respite there, floating at five thousand five hundred forty-three sixty-four, as we can see on our screen. That's probably uh, we also had that across the board um, from uh, onto a lot of the Asian Asian um, stock markets, and no doubt we're seeing the same here in Europe, straight for, straight into that open of of, of Europe. Um, in terms of the news announcements today, we've only got one key announcement, I would say. Um, or the or the big one uh, would be the ECB press conference, which is on later on this afternoon for us here in the UK and in Europe. Uh, it's a one thirty uh, GMT, um, so it's going to be uh, pretty much at the start of uh, your uh, uh, of the American Open. So. Um, Big data there. Obviously, we've got a fortnightly unemployment claims data coming out on the USD looking at insurance claims um, on employment. So again, that is going to be another it's going to be another one that adds to um, the US dollar index, actually. Um, and I think that's the first chart we're going to address right now. So first things first, let's have a quick look at that dollar index dollar index right now floating just a, just below 100 now um, it's had it's had a bit of a knock last few days um, and uh, most certainly what we will see we will see that on our charts um, and if we if we just see right now off the highs that we saw above the 100 the, around the 102 level um, or, or just shy of the 102 level um, we see that dollar index has taken a bit of a hit. Now, um, this looks like some kind of correction prior to the um, the strong surge in the dollar that everyone's expecting. Um, remember, we we had the surge in the dollar with um, prices being tallied in or effectively being pushed, uh, uh, being adjusted accordingly, preempting a uh, a twenty five basis point rate hike. Um, that's what the market sees right now as a potential interest rate hike, so it's a 0.25% interest rate hike from the FOMC um, towards um, uh, uh, in in just next week. In fact, um, obviously we do have that key data up from the ECB today with the minimum bid rate and uh, the press conference, which should have give us. Um, the grounding of what we should expect from them. We're expecting a continuation um, with their policies um, and m most certainly a continued tightening of it. Um, so if we just move over uh, to another chart, the only chart that I would say where we've seen a slight, a slight bit of respite on the dollar um, is this one here. So we've seen, um, uh, we're looking at the yen. The yen's holding just below the 114 mark as we've got highlighted in this chart um, we've seen it broke pretty much every day now um, of that 114 and uh, closing above it a couple of days ago and then uh, climbing a little higher before it came down below that and has stayed below that 114 mark as indicated by that level of resistance or that price ceiling we see on see on our screens right now um, we see that it's moving away. 
moving steadily on to the chart, and I think the main chart for today is um, your euro. Now, obviously, off that um, off uh, off that huge uh, bar or that um, push up, or straight after um, the data came out or the news came out from Italy. Um, we saw almost like a seesaw effect on that day. Um, the euro is virtually unchanged from pretty much the start of um, uh, the closing of the start of the first first uh, first day or the closing of Monday, um, floating just above uh, zero seventy eight uh, ninety or eighty eight right now. Um, looking like it's it's sitting just above those highs most certainly sitting above that level that we've got highlighted or that price uh, what was a ceiling and now it seems it could potentially be used as a floor uh, which i'm sure would be welcome used to, to many europeans um and um for here most certainly here in the uk as well especially with the christmas period coming up so um so quickly and no doubt people are going to be flying out and buying buying presents for everyone so um it's, it's obviously going to have an effect um on to prices uh, moving on i just want to have a quick look at wti because um we've had uh in fact let's just flick straight over to wti here um because right now with wti where it's at this is a an hourly time frame here um, and we can see the state of WTI sitting just above 50 right now. In fact, I'm just going to shift that over to a daily right now, sitting at 50, 50, 88. Coming off that, coming off those lows of midway, midway through the $50 mark. So just, just, just below 50, uh, 50, and right now sitting just below 51, 50, uh, it's 50, 89. Uh, as to speak, coming off that as uh, that fifty percent retracement up to that six one eight right now, um, using those levels well um, in accordance to it, and most certainly is using all of our analysis going forward. Now, um, obviously, uh, many people were thinking for this to carry on surging past the fifty two level. I think that was that was the key level everyone was looking at. We saw we we, we saw it break it break up into the fifty three. Before it came plunging back down, it obviously seems as if people are waiting for that, um, uh, waiting for that meeting to happen on the tenth of this month. So if you, we're a couple of days away now, um, before that meeting in Vienna, and definite clarification on um, on the cuts in uh, supply um, and therefore production potentially. Um, but I think the markets are a little wary of how skewed skewed that. Uh, data is and the collusion how tight that collusion is as well and I think that's going to be the key that's going to be the key or the sticking point for us is going to be how tight that collusion will be amongst not only OPEC which we've seen um, which we haven't seen much collusion in uh, to be fair over the last 12 months um, uh, and, and that's very, uh, very strange for a cartel, um, a lack of collusion in terms of uh, holding up prices and controlling prices, but also non-OPEC um, member states such as Russia that are also vowing to potentially cut production. So we should see a spike um, or most certainly an, a, a rise in prices here, a rise in real prices on on the value of uh, oil. So remember, we're looking at WTI, and that's, that's probably the chart that we're most uh, we're looking at most. Obviously, um, some people will be looking at Brent. Brent sitting just around fifty three, so it's a couple of dollars on top of um, the uh, west uh, on the West Texas, um, but. Right now, still holding above that 50 level, um, which we should most certainly see, um, especially with that with that news announcement or or that um, that meeting coming up in a couple of days. Um, moving off, uh, moving off onto another shot. I think the next shot we'll have a look at. Just have a look at cable right now. Uh, cable still showing its resilience. Had it had it had a had a shallow pullback over the last couple of days. Taking it back. Clipping this 50 moving average on this daily time frame um, before heading back up above that above the fib level that's highlighted that was actually drawn on the weekly time frame um, sitting and floating at 1.26 uh, 26.75 so just below the highs um, of that 27 um, uh, 100 level that we saw a few days ago and we see it top um, we saw it top up to the 27.75. 
73, 74, 75. And if you, if you follow that crosshair that's on my chart right now, what you would see is a previous high from, um, from the last shift or the last strong bearish move down uh, back in back in towards the early early part of October. Um, are we expecting this to carry and climb? For, for myself personally, I'm looking for this to climb a little prior to uh, prior to um, it going short again. Probably tailing with, um, and well, I should say most certainly tailing with the strength in the dollar. Um, but right now, as we're seeing um, the dollar. Um, flutter a little as we see in the dollar index it is is down a little um, we should probably expect to see this climb um, please remember that this chart has also been resilient despite the, the strength in the dollar um, and when we have seen strength in the dollar index this hasn't really moved too much so um, probably full well expecting it to climb a little more before we would see a uh, shorting um, in in or well, this chart to get into shorting territory. Um, all right, guys. Um, uh, there are many m many other charts that are up for discussion, and always uh, we'll be happy to discuss them with you uh, with any emails or messages that you send us. Um, by all means, please send them off to info at phoenixblue.co.uk, and we will be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, okay, guys, until next week, um, this is Ashok Patel signing out. I uh, hope you have a fantastic uh, end of week trading and a great start to the weekend. Um, until next time, guys, happy trading. Goodbye.